In this video, we're looking at the best string libraries for music producers, so stay tuned. When working with music producers that haven't had uh, that much experience with orchestral samples, uh, they can often be frustrated with uh, the, some of the samples that I use because they're not that intuitive and easy to use. And so I wanted to have a look at what would what would be my recommendation for a music producer. And we're gonna look at like ease of use, uh, sound obviously, and uh, just general intuitiveness. Hey, if we haven't met yet, my name is Tomut and I run this channel called Sifter Studios where we do uh, mixing tutorials or film music uh, tutorials. And sometimes we do like workflow tips and time management tools and, and so on. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to subscribe below. Okay, so looking in my template, I have some different string libraries that I use for my productions. And we're going to have a look at what could work and what probably wouldn't. So just by seeing all of these tracks for Spitfire Chamber Strings, you can already see that it's not going to be easy to use uh, f when you're just getting started. So I have all of the different sections here, uh, the legatos and different sounds that uh, the strings can make uh, called articulations. Uh, and down at the bottom here we have the ensembles, and that's going to be what music producers are used to playing, right? So this will be the the full full ensemble. You can play uh, on the keyboard like you would play a piano. To get kind of those transitions between the different notes, it's not as harsh as it is right now because I'm playing uh, from a slave computer and it's going through a, this whole system and blah blah blah. So it's going to sound a little better than this and you can mess around with, like if I go to Ensembles Long, I could have played around with the release. So if I take the release up a little bit. You can kind of smooth over that transition. So you can kind of make it easier for yourself that way. And here obviously you also have the different articulations. So you can go for muted strings. And if you actually get them to play. Or you could do, you can have the flat handle, which is Spitfire's signature sound. Um, it's beautiful. Um, so, but uh, this library still, to, to get it to sound uh, its best, it's still uh, requiring you to do uh, modulation at the same time. So that would be using uh, a mod wheel or using some kind of a fader control. I have, I have a Nano Korg Nano Control 2. It's really cheap and it, it does the job. And then you could do stuff like this. So you get the whole dynamic part of it, uh, which you're kind of missing out on if you're not using, when using these kind of orchestral samples. And that goes for all of the different libraries that I have here in my template. They all require some tweaking to get them to sound good. And obviously when working with a string section, you would go section by section and do uh, legatos if you're playing long notes uh, and kind of be able to have more control than using an ensemble patch. So if you go to uh, the cellos, for example, let's find the cellos legato performance. Let's see if we can play this. And there you can control stuff like um, vibrato as well. And, and different stuff. 
So the big part when, when using legato is they've recorded the different intervals between notes so that the transitions between the notes will seem more natural. That, of course, means that you can only play one note at a time, so uh, you can kind of think of this like a monophonic synth. And that's limiting you in some ways. If you're not unique, you kind of need to think about what you're going to do for the next few steps when you are recording uh, each section. Okay, looking at another library, we can we can have a listen to Hans Zimmer strings. Uh, so this is uh, an insane amount of players. Moving on to musical sampling, soaring strings. Musical sampling is a brilliant, brilliant sample library uh, company that offers uh, somewhat cheaper libraries uh, that are kind of specific. So they have like trailer brass or trailer strings or adventure brass, adventure strings. Uh, I think soaring strings was uh, their first library or one of the first libraries. And it's meant to be like uh, this really, really heavy vibrato, uh, over the top kind of uh, library. So let's have a listen to the ens ensemble. Novo is a string library that's kind of uh, divided in two. So you have a creative part and a more traditional part. And the tr both of them sound awesome. So the traditional part is, is a lot drier than the other libraries, than Spitfire libraries. It's, it's really uh, crisp and dry and easy to work with and add your own reverb to and kind of make it fit into your workflow. These strings might be a, a good first buy for a music producer because in addition to uh, the, you get legatos, you get long spiccatos, pits and tremolos, so you have like you have a couple of different articulations. You don't have first and second violins, but you have the, the other sections. So you have the different instruments kind of. Violins, violas, celli, and basses. And then you get some more of like effects. This kind of stuff. And they also have some expansion packs called Intimate Textures and Rhythmic Textures. And then they have this whole sound design thing, which is strings mixed with uh, synth elements. And kind of, uh, you can, if, you, if, we, if we, if we have a look, something like this. You have all of these three different sound sources that you can um, change the volume and pan from. You can change them up around and you have like macros uh, being affected. And you can assign macros to the different parameters here. So this is the mod wheel. So you can kind of see how it affects the EQ here. Here we're adding a high cut filter and we're also adding drive and gating 
the gate uh, has let's see if we can find that the gate uh, you can kind of do a step sequence kind of thing for example so you can get all sorts of different sounds with this so then it turns into uh, not really a string uh, instrument but kind of a synth and a sound design tool so and they have like a loop designer as well worth checking out but for solo strings is a purchase I thought I was going to be in love with because I love Spitfire. My opinion about this library is that I might not have gotten to know it uh, well enough yet uh, and therefore I might not be able to appreciate all the different nuances uh, to make it sound as good as it can sound. My point is if I'm feeling these things then a music producer uh, maybe should steer away from this library for, for their first uh, purchase. Cinematic Studio Strings is uh, not that cheap, but it's not among the most expensive uh, string libraries. It sounds amazing, but I'm um, going to see if we can find an ensemble. Like after listening through all the string libraries, uh, this sound is a little synthy to me. compared to the other guys, uh, that their legatos is amazing. It sounds amazing, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you can spot it, uh, but uh, there's a lot of latency from from where I'm actually playing the note until I hear it. So uh, it requires a little bit of learning and uh, you can get, get it to sound even better with some editing, going back and forth programming. Uh, so it can sound amazing, but it, it will require a little bit of work. So again, maybe not the, the best. And that's all the libraries I have in the strings folder, but I want to show you one more. Uh, some of you guys might have Omnisphere. So in Omnisphere, there's this patch called Adagio Espressivo, which I think that for many producers will be uh, just fine. Let me Let me play a little. Sounds amazing, and uh, clearly it's a synth-based uh, thing. Uh, but I think for a music production where it's only going to be in the background and create some pads and chords, uh, I think some of you might have this already and and don't know about it. Uh, and it's beautiful, beautiful, highly recommended. So in conclusion, uh, I would have a look. Do I have Omnisphere? Maybe I should buy Omnisphere <laughs> for all the different music production needs that you might have. Uh, or you could have a look at um, Heliocity's Novo. 
Uh, other than that, um, I love chamber strings. I love cinematic studio strings. They are probably my two favorite libraries, but they are going to require you to learn them in a much bigger way. So that's my thoughts about uh, what the best strings for a music producer uh, might be. I'm really interested in if you're uh, agreeing with uh, my choices or not. Which library did you think uh, sounded the best? Let me know below. And uh, if you got value out of this, uh, why don't you hit the like button? Uh, that would mean a lot to me. I'll be back next week with a new video. And until then, remember that there is always gold in everyone. Bye.